There's a lot of people talking about the word Akata. It was actually trending on Twitter. And the reason why it's trending on Twitter, um, there's this professor, Nigerian woman by the name of Uju Anya. She is a professor at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, it's out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now this woman, you know, the reason why she's being called out, even to the point that she's apologizing after everybody getting on her about this word Akata. Um, now we all know Akata means wild animal. We know that I'm telling you right now, I'm very hostile toward that word Akata a lot more than I am the N word. The reason why I'm more hostile toward that is because we wouldn't be in the situation we're in dealing with these white supremacists if it wouldn't been for people that calling us a kata and put our behinds in slavery. Let's call it what it is. Okay. And these people that sold us into slavery, they come over here with that same sentiment against us. If you notice that you always see, and I'm not saying at all, but you always see more so Nigerians having issues with black Americans because a lot of their behinds was involved in the slave trade selling, selling our ancestors. But let's continue with this woman here. Now, the reason why I don't say all, because this is a Nigerian woman that you see on the screen, Ivy on Yador. She, she's a Nigerian as well, but, and she's calling her out. Okay. So I don't throw away all Nigerians. I don't just the ones that's, that's, that's cooning and they have that old slave money like white people do now. Ivy says, do you see a kata as a derogatory term? She says, I do not. He said, arguments are made about it being a slur, specifically deriding an ancestor, including the enslaved. But it has not been my experience, and I certainly don't use it as such. It's a very helpful term to distinguish a very specific population too often taken as a whole. So see, she don't want to be put in with we all black people. See that that's the thing what they tell us in America. We we've been saying forever. We, Hey, we all black. You know, we need to work together. We need to build together and they come over here. No, I don't want to be them. I'm a, that's a katas. I ain't, I ain't that. You understand what I'm saying? They brought that tribalism and that, that hatred, that divisiveness, that xenophobia, cause that's what it is. They bring in their freaking xenophobia from, from the, from Nigeria over here. But, they, but when black Americans say, okay, well then we need to recognize our ethnic group. We have seen the abuse that we're taking from people that we paved the way for to come over here. Oh, you Negroes being divisive. You Negroes are hateful. You don't like Africa. That is farthest from the truth. You can never tell me that I love going to the African continent, but I'm, I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to why I haven't been to West Africa yet either. I'm, I'm going to talk about that because I'm just going to be just transparent up front with it. But continuing, interesting, she says, the translation seems derogatory, and I'm not sure why black American wouldn't suffice. You say, it is usually when making derisive statements. You say, it's not a term of endearment or respect. I'm su- I was surprised to see it and wanted to ask you about it before making assumptions. You say, black American does not suffice because blacks in and from the U.S. are not the only black Americans, which was the exact point of my tweet. The Americas are vast and replete with diverse blackness. I was very purposeful in my use of the word, which I didn't pose as derogatory. Well, she said the content of the tweet itself was already derisive. It said, and when linked, they say with the translation of the word, I was surprised to see it. It said, because that's why I asked. I didn't want to assume your intention. Do you think it matters how the group of people you refer to feel about that term? She says, a read of a kata, a derogatory, you say, accepts the premise that is an insult to say that someone is descended from enslaved Africans. You say, it is absolutely no shame or disgrace to be a child of the enslaved. Shame lies with the captors and enslavers and to those who sold them. Shame lies with you too. This is why you can't get your act together in Nigeria too. Let's call it what it is. Because you curse with a curse too, that you ain't made right. I'm going to say it. You say, plus, why would I insult myself? So then the woman says, well, a term of, uh, for descendants of enslaved Africans wouldn't be derogatory. So the issue is that the term translates to wild animal in Yoruba. She said, I'm not familiar with the dictionary translation, nor uh, any aware anyone used this. So for 30 plus years, I've known it was a term for us blacks. It is sometimes used derisively by Africans 
who seek to distinguish themselves as not descended from the enslaved. He said, I'm not that group nor use it that way. So they clearly do not want to be associated with black Americans because in their mind, I'm not no freaking slave. I didn't come from no slave. Yeah. Because you come from people that sold black people. You the one sold us. Your ancestors, that's why you clearly have an issue with being affiliated with, with the black American people here. That's your problem because y'all was heavy into the slave trade. You were, you were trading uh, African people for forks, for, for mirrors, for, for alcohol, probably rum in particular, guns. This is what you were trading to the white man for. The white man ain't going there and snatch every one of you. But see, this is the thing. After the white man traded all that stuff with you, he came right back in there and snatched a lot of your people up too. Even the people that was helping him capture slaves, he put them right in there too. That's why when you say king and queen, they laugh at you because they had these so-called kings and they went grab them up too and put them in slavery. If you want to know the history. So then Ivy continues, say, fair enough to so say, I don't know what it meant either initially, but I asked my mom at some point, we're not Yoruba. It said, but if you look it up, that's what it means. Anyway, hope you have a good rest of the day. Thanks for engaging with me on this. He said, thanks for challenging me on the perception of disdain for others. I surely did not intend to communicate. He said, I appreciate your approach as a respectful approach and sincere desire. I said to understand where I was coming from instead of automatically assuming my ill will have a wonderful day. But then another way she talks here, you know, cause she, she has an issue with black Americans being the standard of blackness. Let me tell you something. Uju. Let me tell you right now, anywhere in the world, we are the standard of blackness. Everywhere we go, black Americans are hella respected. You know why? Because we didn't lay down and not fight back. We didn't, we always stood up. We fought and we died. Matter of fact, black Americans are more respected throughout the world than Nigerians are. If you want me to keep it real, black marriages are hella, hella respected. Matter of fact, I'm going to call it what it is. I've been in the African continent. Do you know what everybody say about Nigerians on the African continent? They call they call, I'm just, and y'all know people that been know what I'm talking about. They call you criminals. They call you drug dealers. They call you scammers. They say you're human traffic everywhere I go. They talk bad about you, but you come over here to America and we don't even treat y'all like that over here as black Americans. We see your name. Say, Oh, where you from brother? Where you from sister? Oh man. Tell me about what's going on in Nigeria. We get hella interested because we want to know. And then when you come in, you, some of you coming over here and got this disdain and hate for black America. When you know good and well on the African continent, you are the one that everybody don't want in their country. South Africans don't want Nigerians over there. Uh, Kenyans. Matter of fact, who was it? What did Maya? What did Maya almost got himself jammed up in Kenya? Cause they thought he was a freaking Nigerian. You don't hear black Americans showing up to any African country. Like, Oh my God. And black Americans coming over here. Let's kick them out. You don't hear that crap. How dare you run or come over here? To the, to the country that we fought for and the country we built. And then you're going to look down on us. Now look at this here. Another one here. Why people are getting at her. Well, she said, no shade of the good sis. However, Akata said need to quit with these assumptions that their blackness is the only one alive in America. So Mexico has a large thriving black population, especially in Osaka, Veracruz and Guerrero said location of popular destination. Acapulco. Nobody was saying, nobody never said that they didn't have black people all in the diaspora. Nobody never said that. But the fact is you're jealous of black America. That's why you're saying that. And then look here what she says at the bottom look at the kind of women that she, she put here. I thought this was a year of return in EPA, whatever that is. Couldn't bring small light even for Akata. She, she, all that mess she said to that sister, that Nigerian sister, cause yes, if, if you're a Nigerian person doing the right thing, standing up for, for, for black America, you are truly trying to unify you, my Nigerian brother, you, my Nigerian sister, but the, but these raccoons here, I'm going to be against them a much harder than I even be against the white supremacists because they importing people like this into this country to sabotage other black people. The same thing they did my ancestors, uh, thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago. And if you look in this chick background, I guarantee you the way she's acting, you're probably going to find slave traders in her background. 
So then after black folks was getting on her and after they were, and that's right, press her, they calling her college right now. They trying to get her out of there, which I support that hundred percent. Go your behind back to Nigeria and go, go over there to the university of Lagos or something. Go teach over there. Since we are Costa so much, you want to come lay yourself up in, in this country, in the country, black Americans have built from scratch and innovated. You want to, you want to come over here, eat food, eat good and, 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 and dealing with all kinds of things that we, you know what I'm saying? But want to call us a kata. So then this is what she say. Look at this statement regarding my past use of the word a kata. First, I apologize for the offense and hurt I caused. No, you only got caught. Perceptions, reality, impact outweighs intent. So although I did not use the word with any intent to slur African Americans, that is what I ultimately did. Female. Why are you freaking lying when the previous one just said, I thought this was a year return. Nepa couldn't bring small light even for the Akata. No shade uh, at the good sis. However, Akata needs to quit with these. You kept calling us Akata. You kept calling us freaking that. So stop. She said, first, I, okay, we read that. He said, Akata is a Yoruba word. I don't speak Yoruba, so I don't know its literal meaning wild animal until two years ago, I knew some use it as a slur and say for descendants of the enslaved, which I am. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not because you would not call uh, yourself an Akata. No, you wouldn't stop freaking lying. You're just trying to make yourself a $5 black American. No, 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 no. Stick with that. That Nigerian tribe. They probably sold us. It's said I used it uh, from a broader Nigerian pigeon context uh, simply meaning black American. Why are you calling us another name? I thought we were all black. Remember why are you separating us with a word? Akata. When I used Akata here two years ago, I knew some use of it was anti African American slur. He said, however, I thought my, uh, my not meaning or using it that way made it okay. I was wrong and I sincerely apologize. That is the most word salad and BS I ever read in my life. That's complete BS. Just admit it. Just say, look, I call black Americans a kata because I don't like them. I don't want to be associated with them. And that's just it. I would respect it a lot more if you just came out and said that. Don't sit up here and play a bunch of word salad because you're scared you're going to lose your university job. That's what it, what it was about. But let me tell y'all something real quick. Let me, let me, let me have a conversation. And y'all know, I love going to the continent of Africa. I love being there. I love it. But you have, you noticed I have never been to West Africa. Have you guys noticed that I've been to East Africa. I've been to Southern Africa, but I've never been to West Africa. Do you know why? The only West African country that I really want to go to is Liberia. I have some great, great people I want to uh, hook up with out there. Good, good people in Liberia, which a lot of black Americans came and, and helped innovate Liberia. Um, Liberia is the only African country who has a constitution to say um, them folks can't be citizens there. The rest of them don't have that. So I will go to Liberia, but I'm talking about the other countries is this. I, I, I take issue with, 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 with the history. That's why I have an issue with West Africa. I know that the Ashanti tribe and all of that, the Ashanti empire, which would be Ghana today. I know Nigeria, you know, definitely uh, would be Southeastern Nigeria to be in, in exact, how they was heavily in the slave trade. We knew the Arabs. So, I mean, that's, that's just bottom line. I knew about that for sure. Um, you have certain tribes in the area of Cameroon, certain tribes will be in the area of Mali today, um, was in the slave trade. And I had a conversation one day, me and me and O'Shea Duke Jackson was actually having a conversation, you know, maybe a, a few years ago talking about West Africa. And he's the only person that actually articulated kind of how I felt. And he said, you know, I haven't been to West Africa either because I just take issue with the fact that they sold us, man. 
You see, and then they're not even trying to, they're not even trying to make it right. That's my issue. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's kind of why I'm at with it. They're not trying to make it right. They say, even if you want to go back, you want to go to West Africa, right? I'm not saying nobody in, in West Africa today in 2022 got something to do with what happened, you know, all those years ago. But my issue is this, why the hell do I, why the hell do I, as a, as a, as a person that, that was, you know, uh, sold off my ancestors sold off into slavery. Well, I got to go back and stay over there seven to 10 years in a country to get a freaking citizenship. I should be getting one, at least a permanent residency at first into citizenship dog. That's the least you can do. Y'all had a big year of return over there and making people feel like, Oh man, come back home or whatever. But then after it was all said and done, it was just a big tourist event. Y'all didn't give no citizenships to all them black American people that came over to Ghana and spent all their money in Ghana. Y'all didn't give anything. And I put all this on West Africa. I don't put all this on East Africa. I don't put it on Central Africa. I don't put it on South Af the Southern part of Africa. I put this on the West African countries, particularly Ghana. Let me tell you about Ghana, Elmina Castle. People that go to Elmina Castle got to pay more money because they're foreigners to go to Elmina Castle. That's, that's disrespectful. That's disrespectful. Y'all should be giving the citizenships from the rip and say, Hey, you know what? We, we, Hey, you know what? Listen, what they did a long time ago. And I know some of the tribes apologize and all of that. And I get it. And, and, and I, I, I'm fine. I'm cool on, on accepting that. But I'm talking about oh, really like, let me tell you the thing. I can apologize to you all day long. But you got to have something tangible. You want to show me a true year of return? Say, hey, black Americans, when you come back here today, you come back during this time period, we're going to have the government officials of immigration right here to process your paperwork to say you are citizens of this uh, particular country because long time ago, we didn't have nothing to do with the selling of your ancestors. But what we can do today in 2022 is we can bring you back home and we can give you a citizenship and you can get your passport for, for, for Ghana, for Nigeria, for whatever country in West Africa that, you know what I'm saying? That's what show me that you really want to bring black people that, that is your, your cousins that they'll sold off back. But you haven't done it. The, you, we have to go through the same process as a white man that want to go stay in those countries. We are treated no different than white people are. That's my problem with, with West Africa. I don't have no problem with the people themselves because they haven't done me anything. I met some awesome people, um, uh, awesome people from West Africa. And I don't blame the people, but I'm talking about the governments and all these people that can actually make it right. They ain't done a freaking thing. It don't cost them nothing to make somebody a freaking citizen. It don't cost a dime to, to just print, print some, uh, uh, uh freaking passports. And it don't take much for us to get to, for them to give us citizenship. We're not asking to take no jobs from nobody. I'm not asking to give me some free land. None of that. I go buy my land. I'm good on that. But I'm a firm believer, and my grandfather always told me a long time ago, if, if, if somebody don't want you, you don't want them. This is why I've always went to countries that always invited me. You, let me tell y'all something. The first time I went to the African continent, it was Ethiopia that had reached out and invited me to Ethiopia. I am not Ethiopian. My ancestors are not Ethiopian. We have no traces of Ethiopia in us at all. But yet it was Ethiopia that reached out in 2018. And that's how we ended up going to the African continent for the first time because of Ethiopia. Then after that, we went to Kenya, another East African country. Then after that, of course, you know, we just recently went to South Africa in March In South Africa. I loved it so much because I relate to South Africans more than any other group I've ever met because we literally have the same story with the white supremacists. So it's so easy like to click up with those brothers and sisters. It's too easy. They understand it. You know what I'm saying? And they got a fight on their hands and, and you know, still dealing the remnants of it. I don't even mind even helping them fight a little, you know what I'm saying? Because at least the numbers are freaking there to fight in America. We don't have the freaking numbers. They have imported people like, Uju here to, to help the white supremacists keep us down and suppressed. At least they got figures like Julius Malema in South Africa, the EFF and other groups like that, 
that's trying to fight. And then people in her community, when I went over to South Africa, the first thing they say, them Nigerians over here dealing drugs, they're human trafficking, they committing crimes, they're doing this. The first thing I heard when I went to freaking South Africa about Nigerians committing crimes. But then you want to come over here calling us a kata when your name is mud in a whole African continent. I've met some great people from all West African countries. I've worked with some people from West Africa and I will continue to work with them, but I'm talking, I'm not talking about the individual people. I'm talking about the governments of those countries. They are not serious at all about anything. And that's why I haven't really been to West Africa like that because I feel some sort of way. Now God maybe have to work with me on that, but I just had just the way I feel because I know the history I've studied. I've kept quiet about a lot of it because I say, you know, when I bring that kind of message forward, I get about a thousand emails. Last time I did the one about that Austin uh, guy that was talking about no black history money. You know how many emails I got from Nigerians after the fact? But I'm telling you how I feel. I'm telling you, I mean, articulating to you why some black Americans don't even want to go to the African continent. It's not because it's the whole continent, it's because how some of us feel about West Africa and what they and what they was participating in. The Arabs were participating in it too. The North Africa, Morocco, they were participating in it. Those those Arabs in Egypt, they participated in the slave trade too. I feel some sort of way about those countries too, not just West Africa. Anybody has something to do with the slave trade, I feel some sort of way about them. But see, the Arabs, is, they, you know what I'm saying? That's different. I'm talking about my own people. The people that are supposed to look like me coming from over there. This is why some black people don't want to go. This is why some black people have a difficulty. It's because y'all come over here and want to look down on black Americans and call us a kata and everything else. You were saying your families don't marry an Akata, but go ahead and marry Zaddy. Oh, we got to make sure to, to stay within the tribe, but it's no problem marrying Zaddy though. But the, but, but the Akata, no, you can't, you can't marry an Akata. No, don't do that. That's shameful to marry the Akata. But I have to say there's a balance. It's not all the people is like that. I would never indict all Nigerians like that because that wouldn't be right. Cause the sister that was questioning her was Nigerian and she was rocking for, with us. And that's the, and that's the people that I'm going to rock with is the Nigerians that rock with us. I work with them. I partner with them. I have nothing but love for them. They, my brothers, they, my sisters for real. But people like this woman here, she's an enemy to black folk. Cause she will work with the white supremacist to, 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 to subjugate and keep us down. She's taking a job. She, she's a diversity. That's call it what it is. They rather hire her in those positions than a black American woman. She got a professor job that a black American woman should be having. There's many black American women that deserve that job. And she took it. And then she looking down on, on black America. Then when black Americans tell you this mess, you guys being xenophobic when the, she admitted for the past 30 years, she's been calling us a kata. I don't want to hear that apology crap. You meant what you said. Well, you've been saying something for 30 years. That's something you believe in. You can't change that in, in, in an apology on Twitter. Something you even typed. You didn't even have the, the, the nerve to actually get on video and apologize. Anybody could have wrote that for you. Your, your, your uh, assistant could have wrote that for you. Who's to say you wrote it. But this is why, like I said, once again, I have not been to West Africa. I'm not saying I'm not going to go. I'm not, I would never say I'm not going to go. I'm eventually go, but I'm saying it probably going to be, you know, if it, Liberia be my first place, Liberia, I promise you Liberia. Yeah, I'll go to the Gambia, but when it comes to certain countries that, that was involved in slave trade, uh, I like to say, God had to work with me on that because within my spirit, I'm still angry about it. I'm still, I'm still angry about it. And a lot of black America is angry about it, but for real, for real, this is why some of my angry and say, don't call me African. This is why 
not because they hate the people it's because they have not made it right either. And they can make it right without even spending a dime. See the white supremacists owe money. And some people have been arguing that, that West Africa owe money too, but I'm not even going there. I, Cause I know, I know the way it is. It, it, no, that ain't gonna happen with them. But the least you can do is give a citizenship that costs you nothing but paperwork. That's the least you can do. Not making somebody wait seven, 10 years. Then you say, well, Ghana has a right to abode, man. F that. If you are a black American, if you a black UK, if you a black Canadian or any place like that, you should be able to go to any of those countries and get you a freaking citizenship. Your countries will actually get, uh, get helped a lot faster. If you just open up the door to the diaspora and say, come on back home for real, for real. Because when you open say, Oh, come back to your return and you don't give nobody a key. Then all you did was uh, calling us to come and spend money and visit. That's like telling my children to come home and, and they come home. But when I close the door behind them, when they leave or whatever, they don't have a key. They can't come back unless I let them in. That year return would have been hella successful. If all those people showed up, those black Americans that actually want a citizenship would have got one. Then that would have been a true year of return. But the way it turned out, it turned out to be a tourism thing. And I don't mind tourism. I, I'm cool with that, but let it be that don't call it year of return. If you have another one, don't, don't call it year of return unless you're getting citizenship. But yeah, we got to call out these people that come over here and, 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 and disrespect black America. Oh hell yeah. We need to call them out, call them out and, and, and put them in a place. Because they've been practicing xenophobia against black Americans for a long time. And now we, we, we are saying, no, that's the end of that. No more xenophobia. It ain't happening. You gonna respect us. You're gonna put some respect on our name. You jealous. Cause we are the representation of black. Well, you know what? When you wear the crown that we wear, when you suffer, like we suffered, then you can go ahead on and be the definition of blackness. You got a whole country over there. Why are you trying to be d defined here? We don't have a whole country that we control. Why don't you go over there and, to, to Lagos and Abuja and all them places and go fix your homeland up, sis. They got a lot of people over there that want professors. Why don't you over there being a professor? But you want to come over here and then you teaching black American kids. And in your mind, you calling him a cotta. Yeah, that, that lady need to go. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the podcast. We greatly appreciate it. Make sure you click the subscribe button. That way we know exactly when you, when you, uh, when we post something else, uh, make sure you should share, you know, these broadcasts, share it because it's very, very important when you share these broadcasts, uh, that way you can let everybody know, you know, I say, Hey, you can share it with five people. That'll be awesome. Um, click the like button, button that way. Hey, you just acknowledging you're here. I know you're here. Could you click the like button, um, and everything and, and leave a comment and we'll see you on the next one.